Surefire Saturdays. My name is Jonathan Collins, and uh, this is my son Bailey. How's it going, everybody? It's Saturday morning. We just got done enjoying a beautiful sunset here at Sunrise. sunrise. Check out that sunrise. Come on, time. I can't get it straight. <laughs> sunrise. Sunrise. Here at a beautiful new farm. Yeah. So, Saturday mornings for me when I was growing up, uh, I got up early, and all the best hunting and fishing and kind of adventure shows were on on Saturday mornings. Yeah, you don't probably don't remember that. I don't remember that. <laughs> My Saturday mornings were full of sleeping in until we started. And cartoons. Until we started hunting. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> what well, what we wanted to do is we wanted to kind of take Saturday mornings back. Want to get up, have a coffee with you. Uh, now, wherever you are, waking up across North America, whether you're on the West Coast or East Coast or somewhere in between, we have got some amazing recipes for you today. So, first of all, we've got an incredible whole roasted oh, yeah. venison leg. So, wait until you see this. As a matter of fact, let's have a look at this right now. Come on in, nice and tight. I want to show you this. What's great about this is this is our last leg from last season. So this was taken off a year and a half old yep. uh, buck. Uh, this was Dakota's first. Um, so you can see the, the quality of this meat. You can see the beautiful color. You'll notice in front of it here that I've got some fresh Concord grapes. Now those are fresh right from our farm. So we're gonna do a little grape sauce on the side. Now, everything today, we're going to be using the barbecue. Now, Dakota was up really early and he was firing up our coyote uh, grills outside. And uh, it's really important to preheat those grills ahead of time to make absolutely certain that you get a really nice start on the smoke. Uh, so we're gonna be using the smoker as well as a propane uh, uh, barbecue. We've got some really beautiful local butternut squash as well. So we were up early, I did these on the barbecue, and we're going to do another one. So, uh, with that, no further ado, let's, uh, let's get Dakota in here. Uh, I'm gonna put for a uh, fresh coffee, and we'll get started with Surefire Saturdays. Here it comes. <laughs> I guess you need coffee too, huh? I need a little bit more. Get a little bit more? Get a little left out, I'm the only one who doesn't drink coffee. We figure we'll get big caffeinated. That's no fault of our own. <laughs> Good morning everyone and welcome to Surefire Saturdays. I'm so excited to be able to come to you live in the morning. I, I don't know, I'm the most, a lot of people are morning people, but I'm a morning person. I love just waking up and chatting, having a great time, and especially enjoying good food, right? Yeah, absolutely. The other thing we want to do with Surefire Saturdays is give you some inspiration so that you can maybe, while you're going out today, grab some of the ingredients you need to light up some of your yeah. wild game. So Surefire Saturdays and Surefire Recipes, everything we do at The Outdoor Chef is all about wild potato. Now, let me just, you know what? I'm gonna get the potatoes on. Okay. And then what we'll do is I'll give you a little bit of a, a barnyard tour. How's yeah, that sound? That's okay. Good. They yeah. wanna bring that camera up and we'll get uh, yeah. these potatoes started. Um, one of the things that I wanna show you, uh, and it's a really simple thing, is when you're doing potatoes, you wanna make sure to start with cold water. So I'm literally just going to fill a pan here, cold water, coat if you want to start putting those potatoes in. Yep. We'll just, and we'll just fill them up. Now I'm going to roast these. We've got all that heat going on the barbecue. I've got some beautiful butternut squash as a vegetable. 
Why not just use simple potatoes? What I love about potatoes for the barbecue is you really don't have to wash them that much. So they will they will develop in flavor and you have incredible taste uh, without having to babysit them. So we're just going to fill that right up. Cold water. Might as well put them all in. Okay. We'll get them all done. And then I've got some fresh bay leaves here. Now whether they're fresh or uh, dried, it doesn't matter. Fresh or widely available now. So I like fresh if you can. Toss those in there. Bay and leaves are really one of those things that, you know, are really underused, eh? Yeah, they are. And it's one of the flavors, like in a professional kitchen, we use bay leaves all the time. Yeah. As a matter of fact, one of my favorite spices to knock off is one called Old Bay. We yeah, found yeah. when we were down in Georgia. Oh, um, you know Old Bay. Throw me a couple hearts and thumbs up if you've, uh, if you've used Old Bay before. <laughs> it's the best way to make anything taste fantastic. I'm going to put a little bit of thyme in there. And then I'm going to grab some salt. And this is one of the things that's really important when you're doing potatoes, just to make sure that you heavily season that water. So you want to season it now. Make sure that you have all kinds of seasoning in there. A couple of heaping tablespoons is what you'll need. And then I'm going to put this, I'm going to cover it. Covering it, of course, will bring it up to temperature faster. And it will allow me to not also, again, not worry about it. So a couple of things we've been working on here at the farm. And Bay, if you want to grab that, uh, that camera, I'm going to take you for a little yeah. tour outside. Now that those are on, I think everything else can kind of hold for, actually, you know what? You should maybe get those... Uh, the squash on as well. So just before you take off there, Bay, um, butternut squash are, of course, when they're in season, they're really inexpensive. In inexpensive. They're gorgeous. They're just beautiful. Um, and the nice thing about it is, is that the more you heat them up, the more that you cook them, the better and more caramelized they become. So I just want to show you a couple quick techniques. First of all, I see a lot of people kind of struggling with slicing these. Um, the nice thing about a knife is it becomes a bit of a lever for you. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to take and pierce right in the center down to the board and then use the strength of that lever to muscle through. That way, even if you have a little bit of trouble getting through it, what you're doing is you're using and empowering that knife. Yep. You're using the strength of that knife and you have a beautiful, oh, the color that. nice, clean cut. Isn't that Isn't gorgeous? Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So if you want to clean those out for me. So the seeds can be kept and roasted, but in this case, we're just going to, we're just going to scoop them out and get them cleaned yeah, up. Yeah, the easiest easy. way to do it is just to grab a spoon and just run that spoon right along the inside. If you just run it along the edge first, it kind of releases that membrane and then you can see all those seeds just kind of come loose and you can just toss those right in. Beautiful. So what we'll do is we'll actually get that out of the barbecue. Now, I want to show you something that we do a lot, and that is to add a little bit of rice as a finish. So the butternut squash are fully cooked in this case. I'll show you, I'll use a, a knife here and pierce this. This is the best way to test to make sure it's done. So you just slide your knife in. You can feel it passes through very cleanly without any resistance. That means it's done and you're not going to have any uh, hard, spot, hard spots in there. Now using a fork, I'm just going to fluff up. Look at this beautiful, this is brown rice. And all I did is a little bit of salt, a little bit of butter, and just a ratio of two to one. You see how fluffy that is? So I'm going to take that and I'm going to take and just literally spoon that into that little cavity. Now you'll see as we roast the others that what happens in that cavity is you get this concentration of all the beautiful butternut squash flavor. And that concentration of flavor will just be soaked up by this, uh, this uh, rice. And the nice thing is if you do have any vegetarians and uh, in your uh, group, you've got something that's perfect for vegetarians. Respect for vegetarians, folks. We're wild to table and all about hunting and fishing, but uh, tons of respect for those who choose a vegetarian uh, diet. So you can see that looks beautiful. Yeah, that looks good, eh? Yeah, it looks gorgeous. So I'm just gonna top this up. Nice. Nice thing is this can be done ahead of time as well. So you can get this done earlier in the day. 
And then what you can do is it'll allow you to just reheat it when the time comes. So you take and set these aside. What are you using the chili flakes for? So the chili flakes are going to go right on. Let's, let's dress these up. So you can see here that beautiful color. Now I want to use a little bit of fat. You can use butter. I'm going to use olive oil and literally just pour a little bit in each of these pockets. And then I'm going to grab and be, you can actually just use your hands here and just kind of slather that up. Jenny says her mouth is already watered. Who's that? Jenny. Jenny, all right, Jenny, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Uh, let us know where you're watching from. I love hearing and seeing and reading where you're watching from. Just throw us a state or province or country you're watching from. We'd love to hear that. So Bailey's giving these a good coat. And the reason why that's really important is you want to make sure to just have a little bit of oil on there. It raises its ability to take the heat. Uh, it'll prevent it from burning. It looks great. It smells great. And uh, it'll allow us to attach some of the seasoning. So if you just put the salt, for example, on top without putting a little bit of oil, it's a little bit tricky to get it to stick. So I'm literally just going to season this. Really important to season it at this time because it'll dry out the water. So the reason we're doing venison today is, you know, whitetail season is in full swing along with uh, many other right. game species, but we've been hunting whitetail hard here in Ontario and so far we've been eluded a few times, but that's what's fun about it, right? That's why it's called hunting. So, you know, let us know how your hunting seasons go. Throw it in the comments there. Let us know what you're experiencing. We're experiencing some bucks. We're experiencing a full moon right now. Yeah. We were literally, we were seeing like four or five bucks a day and now starting last night, nothing. They're just gone. We were sitting in the stand <laughs> last night. We were like, why didn't we see any deer? We'd sit, we've been seeing deer for days. And then we come inside and we look out the window and there's a big full moon. We're like, okay, now I know. Now, and if you know why, let us know, but we have no idea why when the full moon rolls around and deer just disappear. Ooh, they're, they're gone. They're gone. So, yeah. I, oh, sorry, go ahead. That's okay. I'm putting a little bit of fresh thyme on this. It's just going to make it fragrant. The kind of real earthy uh, flavor of uh, fresh garden thyme goes so beautifully with, uh, with the squash. So you can see how beautiful this is. Now, cooking with the thyme allows some of the oils that are in the fresh thyme to go into the squash and into that uh, top layer. Once I'm done, I'll also finish with some more fresh thyme. That way I've got that nice brightness from fresh thyme, but I've also got the pungency and the potency of roasted thyme, which I absolutely love. Yeah, it's really good. It eh? adds to it. A lot of people don't use herbs sometimes, but honestly, it's like the cherry on top of the cake. It's yep. the best thing you can do. And you can see I've used chili flakes now. In this case, I like to heat this up. Uh, for me, butternut squash is something, you can, you can actually even do sweet things with butternut squash. You'll see a lot of times to make it palatable, uh, people are using cinnamon and nutmeg and also brown sugar. Brown sugar is my favorite. You throw a couple of tablespoons of brown sugar on top and it just yeah. turns into candy. Yeah, so I mean that's a great way to get people to eat it who maybe don't yep. eat it all the time. For me, I like it more savory and especially as we pair it with this venison leg, I want to get something that's really going to be rich and full flavor. Right. The reason I'm using chili flakes instead of just pepper is I really want to kick it up a notch. So, hey Code, why don't we uh, head out and yeah. show them the farm. Mike said, take Saturday back. Sounds great. Let take me. Saturday back. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate it, buddy. One All right. My, one of my favorite things about this Saturday is, you know, everyone gets together on Sundays. He has a nice family dinner, and yeah. I like this because we can cook you guys up a recipe yeah, that yeah. maybe you can try on Sunday night. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay, so uh, as we come out, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take a minute and preheat my barbecue. So you'll see we've got hey Bay, can you grab a cloth? So important when you're starting the barbecue, make sure to open it up. I had a kind of an epic mistake this uh, summer where I thought it had started, and then I can tell. When you bring your face up, I I lost. I lost. Can you grab a cloth? I lost a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, hair on on my face, so I'm just going to bring that up to temperature. I want the the uh, barbecue. Thanks, buddy. I want the barbecue at about 350 degrees. We'll mimic what we'll do inside. The nice thing about barbecue weather is that it's 365 days a year. What I love about it is it gets all the time. It gets uh, the mess outside uh, and it 
also, but it's a, it's a powerful cooking surface with lots of space. Now, let me give you a little bit of a tour here. So you can see this is our, uh, our back deck and you can have a look over uh, part of the property here. Now what Dakota is showing you there, that is going to be an epic garden. So we're doing pasture and garden. We're going to do at least a one to one and a half acre garden so that as we start this uh, next spring, we're going to show you cultivating. We're going to show you planting. Yep. We're going to show you how to grow, how to harvest, how to can, yep. how to dry age, how to store. Uh, you'll see the outdoor chef now. We've taken this to the next level. So Wild to Table is going to go beyond hunting and fishing. One of, one of my favorite things that we're going to do out here is we're going to take a certain amount of space, a common space that someone, say, who lives in a big city would yeah. have, either an apartment ten or by something ten. like that. Yep. And to show you with so much seed, this is how much you can get out of it. Yep. And just to sh kind of show you how you can start to get into this life and how great it is. Yeah. So what Bailey's talking about is our, uh, like our postage stamp garden. So what we'll do is we'll take a 10 by 10 space but we'll also container garden so container gardening will have yeah there's a little pack Gun of boom. Shot. somebody shooting something so <laughs> um, we'll take uh, a little bit of uh, container space and we'll show with vertical container gardening how much yield you can enjoy yep. and also in a 10 by 10 I've shown it in the past how you can take about 25 to 30 dollars worth of seed yep. and you can generate literally a thousand dollars worth of food and let me tell you something it's it's uh, organic. Yep. It's inexpensive, and let me tell you, it tastes absolutely amazing. And you feel so much better. A lot of times, I find it hard. I don't want to make dinner. I want to pop something in the microwave. You know, yep. stuff like that. Ooh. But when when it's your garden and you're out there and you want to make a salad because you did it, it's something different. Yeah, it's awesome. So what to, uh, I think you're going to feed this a little bit, right? Yeah, this okay. needs to come up a little bit. We're at about, we're at about 250 right now, so we're going to load this up a little bit more. There's I love the way this loads. Oh, yeah, look at this. These coals are nice and white here. And what we're actually going to do is toss on a little smoke, too, once we get that on there. And once you get the white coals rolling, Code, tell me a little bit of how you got this rolling. So the best thing to do is actually, you just want to get... They sell these tubes, and what you want to do is you get this tube and you pour your coal in the tube. And what that does is it concentrates the heat and flame and pushes that flame right up to it, and then the coals on the bottom start the top and so on and so forth. Basically, you take those and pour them in. Now, you didn't have that this morning, no, so, this morning, so you no. just use newspaper. This is the thing that I love about cooking with charcoal, is that you don't need to fuss with it no. a lot. So all you need is a little bit of newspaper and you build a little fire in the center, Pad the newspaper yeah. underneath and then build the uh, stuff well, on top. Well, try and not use, I mean, it's very easy to use lighter fluid and put lighter fluid or coal or charcoal starting fluid on there. But I've tested it and trust me, it changes the flavor of your meat or whatever you have in there. It gives it a fuel taste. <laughs> it does not <laughs> taste good. So let's have a look here. You can see it took no time at all. We're already up to almost 450 degrees. Stainless, extremely clean, extremely easy to use. Goes on. Now oiled and ready to go. I can close that up and I don't have to worry about it. So with that, so it looks so good, right? So a couple other things. We're going to go inside and we're going to show you some of the beautiful bucks. Now this is yeah. a very, very cool farm because this is the highest point in our county. So you can literally see you further see from here miles, right? than you can anywhere else. I love the fact that this is a high point. Yeah. And we'll show them, let's just show them real quick for a couple of our hunting spots here. Yeah, so. I'll show you right here. We're, we're gonna show you some footage from we the blind. We have a blind right here, right on the corner of the yeah. property here. And there's, we'll show you some bucks that have been moving through here. We have another set up here. And I can't believe we've only been here about four days, and the yeah. amount of bucks we've seen in the last four days since we moved here has just been incredible. Yeah. The one but we know you guys have been watching that Bowtech flagship bow, and let me tell you, that bow is something else. And I know you saw that live Instagram feed of when Tim Glom from uh, Bowtech did that. that was I wish shot. we haven't seen a deer like that out here yet, but I hope one just like. Because let me tell you, that was an incredible buck. And, I mean, 
I know you guys can't wait next week for them to show you that bow and how they did that shot with that bow. But Oh, did you want me to bring the bow out? No, no I can't, can't bring the bow out. <laughs> that bow is, you know, last year I, uh, I took my very first whitetail with the Rain 7. Um, and I had, I, I never experienced anything more fluid uh, and more pleasurable to shoot. Um, the precision and the design uh, was exceptional and second to none. And let me tell you, this flagship bow from Bowtech for 2018, well, let's just say you're not going to want to miss next Wednesday night. The launch, first of all, you have a chance to win one. I want to direct you to BowtechArchery.com. Get over to the site and check it out. And by the way, Bowtech Archery is the only, the only uh, company in the hunting industry bringing you live hunts. If you want to experience what it's like to be on a hunt, yeah. to see what it looks like, what it feels like, and not just uh, the highs, some of the lows, yeah. some of the times when you feel like, you know, you're just getting busted up. <laughs> um, perfect example, they were out the other day, and he had a, buck, a buck at 40 yards and he took that shot. Oh, he jumped the string. That deer jumped yeah. the string so oh, much, yeah, his yeah. belly hit the floor. Yeah, yeah. And then he missed, and man, I, I personally, I know what that feels like. Yeah. You guys know but that. I do. But that's, what, but that's what's great about the live hunts is that, you know, when it makes it to TV, you know, you, all you're really going to see. You it's only polished. They, they have a very, Fine they, they have time. 22 minutes to yeah. show you something. And that better be a kill shot probably, right? They're yeah. not going to show you a miss. So the great yeah. thing about a live hunt is that you get to see the real, true, what's it, the raw yeah. nature. What of you hunting. get at Botech is you get the spirit yeah. of the outdoors. The soul. The soul. It's, there's nothing like it. So yeah, let's take a minute good. and as we begin to prep this, uh, this whole deer leg, this whole venison leg, uh, we're going to show you a very simple preparation. And you might think, oh my gosh, you're taking the whole leg. Let, think about it in terms of size. Think about it like a lamb leg. I've cooked lamb legs so many times, and lamb legs are something that are reserved you know, for Easter, for Christmas, for Thanksgiving. Um, especially in Europe, lamb leg is a coveted thing. I want you to think about this, that the venison that we're going to be preparing today is far less gamey, in my opinion, than even lamb is. Oh, for sure. It's no question. It's, it's, it's beef-like in its flavor yeah. and its texture. And so I want to take a very simple preparation. What I love about the whole roasted leg is when you serve it, it is magnificent. It has that wow, wow factor. factor. Especially yeah. for your guests. If you're having a big party, yeah. you roast that leg whole. With the way, you'll see the way it looks when it's finished is unbelievable. Yes, yeah, Cindy. I just wanted to let you know that we have our first international viewer from Sweden. A Sweden. Swedish viewer right on. That's great. Hey, listen. Uh, uh, Swedes are uh, great hockey players too. I gotta give you that, okay? Uh, just a little <laughs> shout out here from Canada. Thank you, Sweden. Thank you for watching. Tell us what you're hunting in uh, Sweden. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about yeah. your experience. We'd love to share that with our viewers. Or what you'd like us to come hunt. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. If you want any visitors, just drop us your uh, your uh, address, and we'll come visit you. So, um, I want to show you a couple quick things. So that uh, when, boys remind me when we go back outside. I want to show them where that Concord grapevine is. Now, oh, yeah. you can see the deer have actually had their way and picked a bunch of these. Some have fallen, but I'm going to grab this. Now, that jar, babe, show them that jar. You worked hard on that. Yeah, me and uh, my two little sisters, we went out there the other day and we collected a whole bunch of these Concord grapes. We came in here and we made our own. It started out as jam, but it kind of turned into like kind of like this grape syrup. So, and it's honestly, it's so good. Uh, this just honestly, this needs a little bit more pectin. Yeah. So this is one of the great things about uh, this outdoor chef uh, life is that you get to experiment. Oh yeah. So he, Bailey experimented by volume. He got to understand the ratio of sugar and pectin and how to make something. So I said to him uh, today, you know what would be brilliant? You know, is the venison, a lot of times we do like a blackberry sauce yeah. and spice it. So what we'll do today is we'll do a, a grape sauce, but we'll show you how uh, amazing that can be. Now, because these are Concord grapes, Concord grapes actually have really big seeds. Oh, yeah. So yeah. you have to actually uh, process them, yeah. heat them up, and strain it off because the seeds don't uh, cook down, but it makes a beautiful sauce. 
If you think about something that's a little bit savory and a little bit sweet, it hits everybody's palate the same way. And what we want to do is we want to make Wild to Table as palatable as possible. Yeah. So, so adding a little sweet yeah. will help a lot. And Concord grapes, I mean, if you have the chance or if you have any to make it, we filled that bucket probably about halfway and we got 13 of these jars plus yeah. two of these giant jars yeah. just from that many. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of yield from that. Okay, so let's get started. What do we have to do now? We got to do a little yeah. bit of. Uh, got to get that deer leg. Got to get that deer leg going. Okay, so let's start with. Um, I'll actually just uh, start with a few fresh herbs here. So what we'll do is we'll start with uh, roast. So there are herbs that are good for roasting, and there are herbs that are good for fresh food. Um, fresh food would be, for example, fresh basil or coriander, lemon basil, uh, even chives. Any of those put onto this at high temperature are really just gonna burn. Yep. But these are like, these actually are perennial. They're like an evergreen. So they're very, very tough. So let's just strip off some of those leaves. Um, they smell, rosemary, I think, is by far my favorite smell. In well, the whole world. rosemary goes perfectly with venison. Um, it stands up to it, um, tons of flavor, and, uh, and really uh, is a perfect compliment. Yeah, it's a very bold flavor that matches the venison very well, the bold meat. It goes together perfectly. So along with this, I'm going to show you a little technique uh, a chef, uh, my very first chef uh, instructor uh, taught me, and that's literally this. So we're going to take and we're just going to put all this stuff, strip all this down, babe, put it all on the, uh, on the board. Um, and with the fresh thyme, take the woody part out, but any of the stems that are kind of on the side, they're just fine. So we're literally just making a flavor base. So anytime that you're cooking, fresh herbs are a great way to infuse flavor. It's inexpensive. Remember, fresh herbs, we're going to have a beautiful herb garden down in, uh, down in our backyard there. And so that's going to be something that we're going to be showing you all the time. Uh, so we'll show you how to, how to start them in the greenhouse and then how to seed them. So I, now I've got some lemon zest. Oh, yeah. So you can imagine what this is starting to smell like. Oh, yeah. Lemon zest brightens everything up so much. It does. And the reason it stands up in this case is because it, it's the oils. The yep. oils stick around. Look at that, eh? Beautiful. Oh, it smells great. Okay, so those are in. Now what I want to do is I want to do some garlic here, buddy. So what I'll do is we'll just take and crush that. And what I want you to do, I'm going to just pull this aside. Hey, Code, why don't we, uh, why don't we show a little bit of footage of the uh, of that uh, the white tail we got here? Okay, um, So literally, all you can, all you have to do, Bay, is literally just use the zester and zest that right onto that pile. Okay. Uh, so if you're just joining us by chance, we're working on the topping for a whole venison leg. We've got butternut squash on the barbecue, and we've got some potatoes blanching. We're going to roast those potatoes. I want to blanch them because I want to make absolutely certain two things. Number one, that they're seasoned properly, and also so that they are fully cooked. And you know, there's nothing worse than waiting for potatoes, and I know everybody's done it. You put them on the barbecue, you wait, you wait, you wait. A really good potato on the barbecue can take 90 minutes. So you want to make sure if you blanch them ahead of time, uh, they don't even have to be fully cooked. But if they're even partially cooked, they'll make your job on the barbecue that much easier. So let's see, what do we got there? I want to show you a little bit of footage here. Uh, this is what we've been up to over the last month. It's been turkey and whitetail season here in Ontario. So this Very nice. first one here we have uh, Bailey, he did a gorgeous stock on these turkeys. Oh, yeah. What we did is we stocked them for about we stocked them for about an hour, about yeah. probably the equivalent of half a mile on these turkeys. Yeah, we were actually we actually had just gotten out of the the tree stand. We were hunting deer that morning. Yeah, and then me and Cody went down to check the trail cam, and as we came around that corner, we were like, oh, turkey. Yeah. So yep. then we crawled through, I think it was three three rows in, eh, into the yep. corn so that they couldn't see us, crawled yep. down. And then we're ha we're laying on our stomachs on the road, and all of a sudden a group of five toms comes out, and they're staring right at us, and we couldn't move for probably five, yep. ten minutes there, and then we finally got close enough to get a shot. And so this is what that bird ends up looking like. So you have... <laughs> 
you've got this is you know so this is truly wild to table so yep. you know you have the privilege of, of hunting these wild turkeys which you know really are the greatest conservation story in North oh, America yeah. certainly here in Canada hunted to extinction at the turn of the century now population exceeding a hundred thousand yep. and literally started just about uh, 20 miles from here yep. uh, started with about 300 birds and now hunters can enjoy these and I'm telling you what every time you get to to enjoy something that you've uh, harvested yourself you take a tremendous oh, yeah. first of all you take a tremendous amount of pleasure in it <laughs> and also none of it none of it ever goes to waste that's, that's no, true that's none of it goes to waste. back in the freezer so uh, the first thing I did uh, as a matter of fact I got my uh, grizzly coolers full Fortunately, they're still frozen. We're going out to buy a, a freezer day because we are beginning to refill our freezer. So what do you got for us next, sir, Cody? Yeah, so this is that beautiful shot on that turkey. Boom, he just nailed them, dropped right there. Gorgeous. Next so, one here. so let's just pause that there for a second. So, what, uh, so Bailey was, uh, what bow was Bailey using there? The uh, Diamond Deploy SV was uh, my bow. It's a great bow, and I uh, I walked up there and I, I got it. I was under I was behind the log, and I couldn't quite get up. It was a really tall log, so I had to draw before I was even pointing at those uh, animals. And then I, I went like this to aim, and I realized I was a little too close. So then I had to go back, still at full draw. Wait, these turkeys are starting to move back. And I had to slowly crawl back on my knees. Code's right there behind me. I finally got far enough back. I inched up and I yeah. popped him out there. It was great. So really accurate bow and a great result as you can see. Oh yeah. What do you got for us next, Code? Well, this next one is, uh, this is myself on the Excalibur crossbow. Okay. Oh, yeah. So the Excalibur micro suppressor is what I was using here. And these turkeys, these were actually, this is the same morning, same turkeys. Yeah. As you all know, they just kind of stick around after you shoot one. Yeah, they're like, hey, what, what happened to Bill? Bill's gone, I don't yeah, know. Hey, what happened to Tom? Taking a nap. <laughs> so these ones stuck around, but they, stuck, they were up kind of course, uh, closer to the corn. So these ones were at about 55 yards, but we had that Excalibur exact mechanical broadhead. Mechanical on, broadhead that, that was uh, very effective. Yeah, and yeah. it practiced out to 60, and you'll see here it was just it's a dirty bow. It's oh, a yeah. bow. Boom, yeah. down yeah. 55 yards. Yeah, and very ethical. Yeah, because of it's I mean you you hit that bird that bird was down that was that yeah, bird was that down was fast um, and it, it made it very simple um, and you know like the the wild turkey is something that they're very elusive they behave in yeah. the spring it's kind of a whole different experience oh, yeah. because in the spring of course you call them in because they're they're mating yeah. in the fall they're just hanging out and they're just they're just they're walking good. around <laughs> looking around you know my, my favorite thing about that day is we had a running joke and it was awesome codes kind of developed a relationship with 55 yards. He <laughs> took his first deer in a tree stand at 55 yards with the micro suppressor and then this year he comes out again and shoots a turkey at 55 yards. <laughs> yeah. Every time I'm going to be full drawn a deer and I'm going to be like, how far is it? 55 years. Here you go. Take it. Yeah. I don't know. You do it. <laughs> so uh, tonight after our broadcast, we'll be back out in the stands and uh, we want to show you a couple of the deer that we've been looking at over yeah. the past week. Uh, pretty crazy. We didn't do any uh, scouting here. We had no idea what, what was going on. All we did the, from the very first day, we pulled out our uh, uh, tanks, we uh, burned. Yeah, the we, burn, the rut. We yeah, started the with the rut space. burn just to see if maybe there might be a buck in the area. Um, day before yesterday, in a 12 hour period, we saw seven different yep. bucks all on Wonderful. our property. All, if I threw a stone, I could hit them from my back porch. So I am pretty grateful. Let's have a look at those, uh, a couple of those right now. I'm selfish, we're going to show my shot, hopefully. Okay. <laughs> and then this is just a funny video of some turkeys all lining up. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to school. <laughs> so this is a buck we saw yesterday morning, actually. Oh, man. Oh, I love this deer. This was a lot of fun. He had us pinned over You can there. actually see, I'll just slow this down, you can actually see that tinks smoke rolling in front of the camera there. Yeah. <laughs> you can actually see it there. But yeah, this was a nice buck. He's just a little young, but they're really beautiful buck. And he, we actually had a, a decoy out for this buck. Yeah. Yeah, that's one thing I wanted to talk about because we we were sitting there and we we couldn't get the deer. We're walking across the field, walking across the field, and we were like, 
how about a decoy? So we, we went out and we bought a decoy and we were like, uh, doe, buck, doe, buck, what do we do? So we put the buck decoy out and sure enough that morning he saw that buck decoy and slowly he just and stomping his way over to it. And, and the up. one before him jetted over. Oh yeah. Like he jetted yeah, over. He came out across out. the field and he was looking right at it and yeah. he came running. I think we have that footage too. So yeah. just a quick tip here uh, as we're talking. We've got all this flavor base together. And the tip is this. So I'm literally just going to slice the lemon. I'm going to squeeze a little bit of this lemon right into all of this. And then I'm going to take, and I've got a little bit of olive oil as well. And I love doing this all together on the board. So literally olive oil, and then even some of the salt. And what you end up doing is you literally just bring all of these flavors together in a really effective way. So literally, using the pinch grip and controlling the top, you can literally just chop through this, right? Yep. Strip it down, and then turn it back towards yourself. Nice thing about this too is with that olive oil, lemon juice, and that zest, it kind of brings those herbs together into a little bit of a paste. Yep. And lets you put it on the deer a little easier instead of it all just kind of like, falling off are you, the side. Are you smelling that? Oh, dude, it's delicious. It smells amazing. So you have that brightness of the lemon, the boldness of the fresh herbs, salt. We'll put some, actually, you want to put some chili flakes in there? Let's stay with the chili, the chili flakes. Uh, you know, some of these things could be done at camp too, eh? They're just that simple. Oh, yeah, they are. Well, just a couple of those spices we've shown our little spice pack. Before. Yep, right. Yep. So we'll show some footage here, guys. This, on this buck, I know in Dad's hands, that 2018 Bowtech flagship bow was getting itchy. Yep. This yeah. trigger finger was getting itchy on this buck. I'll show you him. This buck was a little bit too smart. He steered clear of us at about probably 150 to 200 yards. But, yep. Uh, You'll see him poke his head up here. He actually, after we zoomed in and took a still frame, he's actually got two broken off tines. Yeah. So this guy's been fighting. Look at him. Yeah, he's a good dude. He, was, he had a good body. Yeah, he had a really yeah, nice good body. Too. Yep. Listen to you guys. You're in a relationship with these things. <laughs> yeah. But look at I'll, I'll back this up here and take a look at this buck. Dad was itchy in his seat when this buck came around. Yeah, he, he came out, and he, like we said, he was coming right to that decoy, and then all of a sudden he got to this ridge, and he was like, he just kind of decided, nah, I'm okay. So uh, That's why he's getting older. Yep, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's uh, one thing I wanted to ask you guys. If you, any of you out there have used a decoy before, have any tips like that, tell us what you think about using a decoy. And if, for that matter, burn sticks, anything like that. If you guys have used them before, tell us your opinion on them. We'd love to hear that. Yeah, we also want to discuss, at our last property, before we moved to this property to hunt, uh, we were actually having a problem with coyotes running our deer yeah. everywhere. That was, oh, yeah. that was one of the big issues, is that the deer were being run off by all these coyotes. Well, actually, we'll throw to some footage here to show you, and we'll see, you'll see him actually take a little leak, right? <laughs> Literally right in front of our stand, yep. right? And so, Marking I mean, you always territory. wonder what happens in the night, what happens when you're not in your stand, and there's coyotes yeah. peeing out in your stand, and the deer just avoiding you. And I mean, in our area, the coyote population is on the rise, and I know in a lot of states and provinces, the coyotes are becoming yeah. a big problem. Yeah, especially on a, on a property, we have, that property has a really high doe population, yeah. and we have a lot of fawns on that property, yeah. and over the past year alone, we've seen yeah. that population go into the floor, and even the yeah. scat, full of deer hair. Full, full of deer, deer hair. hair. All yep. the scats full of deer hair, hair, and I'm sure you've seen a lot of the skulls that we usually have on set. That's from that property, and those aren't kills, those are just found skulls on that property. So you can imagine, and we found two last year that were attached to carcasses. So yeah. whether it be by natural causes, but the coyotes are really taking down a lot of the deer, I he, think. He was lucky. I was sitting in the stand, and I'm sitting there, and I'm, I was early, so I'm like almost falling yeah. asleep. And uh, he came out, and I thought it was a deer, actually, because all I saw was his face at first. And Let's a, have a look at that footage, because yeah, that is actually a beautiful yeah. coyote. That's actually right over a ridge, so I thought it was a deer. But it uh, turns out he came running out by us, and it was a coyote, and he was just, just too far. He was about 55 yards, and, and I just didn't feel comfortable with the wind. little leg here. Takes a, right there by our stand. Yep. And then he's off and gone. That's and my 25 yard bushy. And the worst, the worst thing to hear is you're you're in your stand, you've all you've, you're set up, 
and then you hear the yipping and yiping of yep. uh, two or three coyotes running your deer around. It's uh, it's extremely frustrating. Yeah, actually, if you follow us on uh, on Instagram that night, the night before that, we were up in our tree stands doing some stuff, and uh, he came out in the field, and I took some Instagram stories of him. We were yipping and yapping at him, and he had a full-on conversation back and forth with us. It was really cool. Okay, so I got a technique here that I want to show everybody at home. Garlic stud. Um, we're going to uh, garlic stud this uh, this beautiful leg. So let's have a look here. You can see that uh, I brought it out. It's room temperature, and you can feel where there are thicker parts in the flesh. So all I do is take a really sharp paring knife and literally just stick it in. Stick that. Where we call this garlic studded. So we're going to stud this stud with garlic. I, re I remember the first time you taught and showed me this and then we yeah. ate it. The taste, you, you don't think it'll do much, but it does a lot. Well, there's a couple things that you get. is You get roasted garlic flavor. Yeah. Um, you get uh, little bites of garlic in every single piece. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things I have to comment on again is, are you looking at the quality of this meat? Oh. Like, do you know what this would cost to buy? And the fact that we were able to, uh, to actually, uh, you know, successfully hunt this beautiful whitetail. I mean, whitetail is something that is so rewarding. I absolutely love it. Yeah, this, this was one of my favorite things the first time, because the first time we ever did this was actually with this leg because I think this was one of the first deer we got is just seeing the anatomy as you pull it off as you start to butcher these animals how yeah. beautiful they're put together it's yeah. amazing it's truly spectacular so now now we've got flavor that's going to be going inside now one of the things uh, you know we talk about a lot is using spices and you've seen us use some spice rubs but in this case for this one Bailey yeah. I really want to, okay, our potatoes are coming along here. I think those will be done shortly. I really want this flavor to come through in a very, that's just the, uh, yeah. would be like the, the yeah. hamster or the back leg there. I, I really want this to come through in a powerful way. So literally, do you want to just give that a nice little coating there? Yeah. You can just rub that right in. One of, the, one of the coolest things that I had no idea about that I learned about uh, deer and actually most animals is their front legs, they don't have a joint. They don't have, yeah, like the that, deer, that, they don't have a ball joint. They don't have a ball no. joint. That freaked me out at first. That was really cool. But it, honestly, with the garlic, I mean, if you can think, if you've ever pan fried garlic and how the room fills with that smell and all those oils start to act, imagine that as it starts to cook inside your meat. So these potatoes are about three quarters finished. I'm just going to drop them into the bottom of the sink here so they can completely cool them off. And it smells good. You smell that fresh thyme on that? Yep. Instantly. So you don't really think often about, uh, about flavoring water, but when you add those flavors like the bay leaf and the uh, fresh thyme, it really, really does a nice. Isn't that that's beautiful? Eh? Oh, yeah. So you can see. Let's have a look again at the quality of this meat. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that little paste, and I'm going to I'm going to put that right on top. So I love this because you know this is, uh, you know, the Italians kind of uh, they call this like a gremolata. And let's face it, we can learn a lot from the Italians in terms of flavors especially when it comes to cooking things like this beautiful, fresh. Now this is not herb crusted. This is just literally a rub. I don't want this to be, this is gonna more or less disappear as I roast this, um, but all those flavors, they certainly will not. So that looks beautiful. I think what we'll do, Bay, is let's zest another lemon on top of there. Okay. When are we uh, gonna use that uh, grape jelly? Grape jelly, we're going to use that. We're going to, we're going to make a nice little sauce. I think for today, for time, what we'll do is we'll just heat up the, the one that you made. Oh, that looks awesome. So just spread that around. And then we'll do some, also some, I've got, I've reserved a couple big pieces of, of the rosemary here. I'm just going to literally lay that on top. I love doing that rosemary smoke. <laughs> oh yeah, the, ro yeah, the rosemary smoke is awesome. So what Koo is referring to is, uh, putting rosemary underneath uh, the product on the grill. 
And what happens is the rosemary starts to burn, literally starts to, just the same way as if you put uh, hickory or applewood on, yep. it lights it up and the smoke that comes from it, it's heavenly. Okay, so this looks amazing. It's starting to come together real oh, yeah. So we got this beautiful citrus. You know, I think what I'm going to do is let's get this out to the barbecue. I want to yeah. finish it with a couple more things. Okay. Um, Bailey, I want you to bring those grapes out. Uh, okay. So just grab a little bowl, and uh, I'm just going to throw a couple more pieces on here. I love this it. is coming along really nicely. I love What I love about this is you have a venison leg, a couple cheap ingredients, and all of a sudden you put it on, you start to look like a real professional chef real quick. Like, this is very, for me, this is extremely elegant, but what's really nice, the presentation is going to be exceptional. Um, so I think what I'll do, I think I'll literally, I'm just gonna carry this bad boy out with me. So I'll just follow you out there. If you wanna go out, yeah. Bay, you got the door. Yeah. So we'll go and have another look uh, out at the farm one more time. We'll take our whole venison leg and we're heading out. Let's go. Oh, it's chilly. <laughs> you want to get that for me? So we're down to 300 degrees, so I like that. Oh my gosh, oh, yeah, look, look at that. that. So let's just, we're just going to literally set that right oh. in the center. Oh, oh nice sear. Okay, so. What I want to do is I'm literally going to take, we're just going to take some of these. We'll just let these roast a little bit. I'm just going to arrange these. Don't need a lot of them. A couple dozen maybe. And and we'll just let that flavor. This is the beauty of cooking wild to table is you can just be inspired. Now, if you don't have, I everywhere we've hunted this year, there has been wild Concord grapes yep. growing on the trees. Keep your eyes open. There might be mushrooms, uh, there might be fruits, uh, wild raspberries, wild blackberries, something around you. You'd be surprised how many different things. Wow. Juniper berries. We've got juniper yeah, berries. Yeah, we got juniper here out front. And you can you can see here what's great about this is you, you can take your deer from your blind, and then the grapes that you put on it are, are what your blind is hiding. So cool. let's have a, yeah, exactly. So you can see down there, that's our row of grapes. Now we'll be developing that. Now you see, we've got a, a blind right there at one end of it. And uh, so let's, let's talk a little bit about smoking here. I want to do a quick smoke. So I've got some, I'm uh, just going to double check and make sure that these are yeah, beautiful. Okay, so let's have a look. We're just going to open this drawer. Now, any of you are wondering what I'm using, uh, this barbecue is made by Coyote Outdoor Living. And Coyote Outdoor Living has been a partner of ours for some time now. And the reason that we love Coyote is because of the performance, the engineering, and because of the quality. So what I've done there is that there's tons of heat. What I want is I want a little bit of smoke, just enough smoke. This is going to be pretty intense. These are going to light up. Now, I didn't soak these because I want that smoke to come ripping out. See, I'm already getting smoke. We're going to close that up. Absolutely beautiful. That'll be rolling Ooh. out. Now, that's going to come up. It'll heat up for a few minutes. Look at that. See how fast <laughs> that reacts? It smells good, though. Eh? Oh, yeah. It smells absolutely fantastic. You want it, but you don't want to be in it. <laughs> <laughs> and a little bit of smoke goes a long way with venison, and it just helps to mellow those flavors. A little bit Let's of smoke? Check. Yeah, a little bit of smoke. Let's check this. So we're... Let's turn Hi. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, my gosh. Are you kidding me? Oh, that smells so good. Doesn't that look beautiful? So that looks absolutely incredible. You can see here, and let's just have a look at that bottom. This is one of the great things about barbecuing skin on, is that skin you can literally just scoop out, and that becomes your container. Yep. And look at this. is These are those juices I was telling you about. So that's not oil. Everything kind of comes down into that end. You know what? That's coming along really nicely. I think it's uh, we could we could probably put some of that rice in there and it'll get a little bit crispy. Yeah. But let's go back in. We'll keep working inside. Got a couple more things to show you. Uh, but most importantly, the thing that we want to uh, encourage you to do is to let us know what you want us to cook. So Surefire Saturdays are all about finding out how to use wild game and wild ingredients and how to take advantage of, you know, a professional, some professional chefs 
and some really good techniques. So just like anything in the outdoors, whether it's camping or hiking, hunting or fishing, you know, if you have the right tools and right techniques, you'll have great success. Yeah. So let's do, I'll get you to start with the potatoes, babe. Okay. So now these potatoes, these have been blanched. So if I was to take a bite of this, it would taste, I'd get the saltiness, you get a little bit of that thyme, a little bit of the bay leaves. All I want you to do is literally just take and quarter these like lengthways. Skin on. Yeah, skin on. Yep. So we're doing skin on, of course, because there's lots of flavor. And then what we'll do, I'll prepare the dish. I've got a cast iron dish here. And so you can use cast iron, you could use uh, porcelain, you can use uh, all different types of cooking uh, materials. I really love the cast iron. These, I'm going to put these on the barbecue. Um, so these will be nice and, uh, and easy to handle. They can go straight to the table. So when you're done cooking, they can go straight in here, buddy. Awesome. So I'm just giving this a nice coating. It just means it won't stick. Um, of course, you've heard us say it, just toss them in. Just literally toss them in. You've heard us say it many times. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. And that applies to the kitchen in a very, very powerful way. So I'm going to put a few bay leaves in there. Intermittently. For flavor, it smells great. And then, uh, Dakota, let's have a, a quick look over here. What I'm going to do is, with these, I love whole roasted garlic. I'm going to take the top off this garlic. Beautiful. Do a couple of these. I know these... These oh, never make it very, very far off the table. Oh, I love when you do it that way. The presentation on those are amazing. Yeah, it's... Um, I have a question. Yep, question. Mike says... Just a second, I've got it right here. What kind of cook time would we be looking at for a venison leg on a pellet-fed grill, if you know? That's a great question. On a pellet-fed grill, it's really... There's going to be a lot of things, uh, Mike in terms of uh, temperature and timing. What you want to do for me, because if you think about the variables, the size of the leg, the size of the deer, what temperature was it when it went in? How much smoke did you use? What was the temperature The best thing of the, of the barbecue? The best thing to do is to use your uh, internal uh, probe thermometer. So when you stick that probe thermometer in, make sure you put it in without touching the bone in the thickest part of the meat and then you'll get the doneness. If you want something that's like medium rare, 125 degrees would be just perfect. Remember, when you take it off, it's going to continue to cook a little bit and you wanna make sure that you rest it completely. So great question, Mike. That cooking time is gonna uh, depend on the size of that uh, piece of meat and of course uh, on, on all the preparations. How's it coming? So hopefully it takes a long time to and cook. Roughly what, <laughs> what temperature it is. Uh, temperature for smoking is a little, little lower. You want it somewhere around 200 degrees, 225 degrees, and then you want to get a nice crust on the outside. You can have it up to 350, 375. That's what we'll be doing with that charcoal out there. Once the smoke is done, and Dakota, if you pan outside there, you'll see that smoke is almost done now. So that intense smoking that I wanted to do, it's, it's, it's only been about 10 minutes. That intense smoke will have passed of a nice, pleasant smoke. That's probably lots. Yeah, so we'll strip that on and we'll give this a good coating of uh, olive oil. Really nice coating. Time on everything. Yep. So good. So good. And then this is where we're also going to put some uh, salt again. Time really uh, brings your meal together too. Yeah. If you're, having a, if you're having a big meal and you, you can spread your herbs over the whole meal, it really brings the whole thing together. So fresh, we got some nice sea salt. If you have a choice, uh, like a flaked or coarse sea salt is very nice. You know, I'm gonna repeat again, instead of black pepper today, we're gonna stick with our chili flake theme. I love the chili flakes. Uh, if you don't want that kick of uh, heat, then of course, uh, just go ahead and, uh, and use black pepper, fresh ground where you have it. I'm liking this Saturday thing. I'm starting to think about when this is all done and we get to eat this. It's, this it's meal. Pretty, and, and before lunchtime, right? <laughs> yeah. So if you're just joining us by chance, we've got a whole venison leg roasting on the uh, smoker. Um, why whole? Well, first of all, presentation. 
Secondly, you've got the bones in, and everybody yeah, knows flavor. bone in means more flavor. Yep. The other thing we've got is we've got some amazing butternut squash, roasting away with fresh herbs and spices, and we're just about to put this on. And you know, a, on a side <coughs> note about that, about the flavor, I remember when dads first started to teach me about stuff like that, I always thought like, come on, like it's a bone, how could it actually add flavor? Yep. Experiment with it. Put one in that does, put one in that doesn't, and I'm telling you, you will taste the difference, for sure. Okay, so this is ready to go up, so I always like to just garnish it with some, uh, some nice pieces here. This is ready to go out. Oh man, that looks good. Oh, yeah. yeah, I want to put lemon zest on that. And we, we'll resist it. Okay, let's head out. And, uh, no, it's okay. You want to grab the camera? And, okay, there you go. <laughs> And, uh, Code, I'll give you this, and if you can, we'll get this on the barbecue. Now, remember, the, again, the nice thing about the potatoes is they can take a ton of heat. So, uh, let's go, and that smell good. Ready, Faye? It's getting real wet. Okay, good. Come on out. Let's have a quick look here. So we're just below 300, which is nice. Have a quick look. Coming along. One of the telltale signs, too, is going to be... Oh, you smell that? That smells so that good. It smells incredible. One of the telltale signs when you're uh, doing any cooking bone in is you're going to have that flesh shrink up the end of the bone. That is probably going to expose an inch to two inches. It'll come right up. And that'll also tell me a great deal about to what's going on in there. So all those flavors are coming together. Yeah, Let's come over here and have a quick look. Check out our... Where are we down? Here. Yeah, we got her back down to 350. That's great. She can slide that on. Oh. And then this is what I like to do. So in this case, I brought this. This is a beautiful whole our, uh, brown rice. And you see that liquid in there? So what I'm doing is I'm going to put that... I, oh, look at... I'm going to soak all that up. So that doesn't evaporate, it goes right into my rice. I keep looking out, I'm hoping that a deer makes a, <laughs> no, I've done it twice makes a, a showing on the show this morning. How, how cool would that be? Go, go get the <laughs> bow, take a shot right here from the barbecue, that would be awesome. No one would believe it. Nope. No but one it would, would be believe live, it. So it would be live. <laughs> uh, a couple, I'll let you keep going here, Claude. I want to talk yep. about a couple of things that we're going to do in terms of... Um, uh, in terms of uh, farm animals. So I'm really excited about the fact that we're going to, going to have chickens. So we're going to be going through the whole process of literally, you know, building the coop and showing you how to raise them, showing you how to get uh, a variety. We've got some different varieties of, of chickens coming as well. I've also got a line on some beautiful goats. Now, I still have to convince my wife that we're going to get goats. Uh, but I was at the shopping channel a few weeks ago, and uh, these goats, apparently, this goat milk is top goat milk. So we'll be yeah. doing some goat's cheese um, uh, and also... Uh, I have rabbits, uh, rabbits as well, and a, and a, a couple donkeys, donkeys uh, so, which I'm pretty excited about. <laughs> um, so all of this will begin to unfold, and I, I want to tell you something about the Outdoor Chef. Um, we're doing it for us, and yep. we love doing it, but we're doing it for you. We're doing it for you because we want to kind of inspire you yep. to maybe, maybe you get a... Um, you know what I'd love to see? I'd love somebody who's in the city get a what do you call it when you get a ticket a civil ticket from the city oh like a, by, uh, a bylaw a bylaw yeah ticket. i'd love to see some <laughs> outdoor chef rebels raising some chickens and getting charged <laughs> for raising chickens we want to change the way that you look at food i think it's really important uh because it's uh, it's it's important for enjoyment yeah. it's important for our health and most importantly for knowledge so it's this is all about sharing yep. knowledge so bring us your questions yep. even if you're watching this after the live is done put your questions in we'll, we'll, be, we'll definitely answer them we certainly appreciate you watching yeah i mean when, and when he says it's all about you we've done a lot of things and the thing that we find most enjoyment out of is first of all teaching people teaching people how to cook teaching people about ingredients and teaching people you know, if, if it's what you want, a way of life. That's what this is about now. We're coming to you live on these Saturdays because we want to show you this, what you can accomplish just by, this isn't about anything else other than
way of life. We're introducing, thank you, sir. We're introducing all of you to an old way of life in our minds. We yep. know a lot of you live this life already, but for those that you don't, look how enjoyable this life is. So that's why when he says it's all about you, it is about you. We love showing people and teaching people all of these things. Yeah, and I'll tell you something, you know, if uh, if you already do live this life, then let's uh, let's become kind of like an army. Let's, yeah. let's, uh, let's start a renaissance. Let's share this thing that we know in our hearts is very different with a lot of uh, a lot of people who, who might yep. not be aware of it. Um, you know, one of the one of the best ways, right from the time when I was really young, I can remember uh, one of my uh, one of the people I learned from uh, early on was uh, in my dad's garden center. Her name was Teresa McGregor. <laughs> she taught me how to uh, to do what she did uh, by um, stewarding, uh, by uh, apprenticeship. apprenticeship yeah. So apprenticeship is something that is, is kind of become lost. Yep. And so apprenticing is the most effective way not only to share ideas and to teach, yep. but to inspire. And that's what we want to do, be an inspiration. So the Outdoor Chefs and Surefire Saturdays will continue, and we will look forward to sharing uh, our hunting, our fishing, um, and this is a really great time for us to thank all of our partners. Yep. So partners like Coyote Outdoor Living and Full Gore Milano, like Zwilling and Staub, and Botech, Botech, Vortex, um, all, uh, all of this wouldn't be possible. Honda, yeah, no, I mean, all of these people, you'll see their uh, logos in our rolling credits. Um, take the time to visit our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, yep. subscribe if you like the content. And I mean, if you knew what it took, just as much as we want to bring you this content, they are the ones that saw well, our idea and were like, we want that con to go to, content to go to our exactly. viewers as well. So it's yeah. not just us. No, they all, want All it. of those sponsors, Botech, Vortex, Coyote, all of those people, yep. they want you to see the content as well because they're giving us this platform, which is their lives, Yes, our platform to come to you live and teach you these things. So it's just as much them wanting to bring this to you. So let's have another quick look. So this is really where it, this is where it begins. Let's, where are we with this? Oh my gosh. Now you can oh, man, see... Let's get let's get kind of underneath there, Bay, and just kind of see. You can see it dripping there. You can see that little bit of coloration starting to come. That's absolutely beautiful. So uh, that's one. Now let's let's slide over here. So this is our whole roasted venison leg. That's our last one. And it's a good thing that it's deer season because we need some more. Last one, man. And I want to encourage you, a lot of people, to take those roasts off. Uh, and some of it will go to ground. Some of it will be saved for roast. I want to encourage you this year, tell your butcher, or if you're doing it yourself like we did, uh, you know, save one or two of those yeah. legs for whole. And at Easter or Thanksgiving or Christmas or maybe somebody's birthday, somebody who loves wild game, save it for them. And then we can continue to introduce Wild to Table to everybody. Now, let's have a look in here. Rolling at just about 325. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you can see here, we've got those potatoes going. This is coming. Now, let's just, we'll just see. We've been going here. Let's just put this in here. We'll just test this. So that means, I would say that probably, that's, that's almost done. But I really want this to be really caramelized. Yeah. So we'll leave that rolling. Turn that temperature up just a bit. I don't know if I can wait. I want to try one of these. Potatoes. Well, they're about three quarters <laughs> cooked. Oh, so, okay. so what we've given you today, we've given you this this beautiful venison recipe. Uh, we've got uh, the potatoes and the butternut squash. Um, next week, I'm not sure what we'll be doing, uh, but I guarantee it's going to be a really, yep. really great. And if recipe. you guys want to see something, throw it in the comments. If yeah. you want to see us cook something, we've done it before, and we'll do it again. Throw it in the comments, and we'll cook it. And we'll cook it absolutely. If you have any great ideas, now listen. Uh, do me a favor. Take the time. Share this with a friend that you know would enjoy yep. this kind of a, a show. Uh, tag, uh, tag them. Yep. Follow some of our sponsors. And again. Go by our uh, YouTube channel and uh, and and subscribe. Uh, we'd love to be able to share these with you on a, on a more regular basis. Yeah, I mean, because we're going to be coming live every week. But along the way, we're going to do some lives, but we're going to also be uploading some videos and how-tos on Especially everything. Especially like, like the chicken, for example. Yeah. Like, we're literally, I, I can tell you right now, 
I have never raised a chicken in my life. Okay, so we have, <laughs> we, yeah, so we have some uh, <laughs> brand new friends. We've known them for just about a year now, and they've been so kind to offer to kind of tutor us. Again, it's that idea of being able to share through apprenticeship. Because we don't know everything. We know nowhere close to everything. <laughs> Far from everything. So if you guys have some tips, throw us, you know, it'll save us some time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we're going to go through the process of building it right, right out there in our uh, little barn. We're going to, we're going to, my, my two little girls are so excited about mm -hmm. raising those chickens. And I am excited about that very first time I put that, uh, that first egg in farm my hand. I guarantee you there's going to be a lot of farm fresh eggs in our recipes. Yep. Uh, but it's just that sort of thing. So those yep. sorts of videos will also be over there. Um, so again, thanks to everybody. Let's go back inside for a wrap up and uh, we'll see what we've got left. Now, do we have anything left to, uh, to show them uh, on video or are we uh, all done for the day? Well, we can show them, let's show them uh, the buck that got away. Okay, the buck that got, okay. This is a perfect way to end uh, the show. Now listen, sometimes you get the perfect setup the perfect morning. And sometimes, because of law, yep. the perfect buck walks in, yep. and you look at your watch, and it's not shooting time. And you get to decide in that <laughs> moment what ethical hunting is all about. Yep. Little peep. Little peep? <laughs> okay, good. So, one, let's... Yeah, one, go ahead. One thing I want to say before this, is, and as a... Uh, Honestly, I would feel confident in saying an, a great tip for this time of year is we did two years in a row on this property and now here we did a fake scrape. Oh yes. We, did, we bent a branch down, we did a scrape on the ground, we sprayed dough urine on it and every single time we've done this we have had a beautiful buck come in interested in this scrape and you'll yep. see in this video Dakota's about to show you of this buck yeah he gets his nose up on that branch starts going at the ground and he attacks it yeah and it brings can, them in yeah thanks for bringing that up because um, you know uh, whitetail are very elusive they're extremely smart and ex especially the older more mature bucks they've been around the block a time or two yeah um, and this uh, buck that you're about to see here, this one was, uh, he was sharp as a tack. Yep. He came that in early. Cool. Yeah, Bailey literally could have dropped a rock on his head. I he was so close. <laughs> uh, but again, um, you know, ethical hunting means, you know, you, you, yep. we, he couldn't take the shot. About the time he could take the shot, he was, uh, he was at about 100 yards and, uh, I was and sitting, at a range. I was sitting there with my, uh, my bow on my lap. I'm looking at his split brow time and tall tall number twos and i'm sitting there and i got my bow and i'm like oh come on are you ready to show it yeah, let's, show, let's show it okay show them the video as you can see that uh, that branch we have down there is the fake scrape we made yeah so we are literally right to the left of this buck about 30 feet up and he's right below us here that branch you see coming down is a little fake, Look at this. fake scrape that we did. Gets Oop. his nose up in there. Yep. And you'll notice this is stealth cam footage. Uh, of all the cams we've tested, uh, this one has yeah, been the best. the best because it doesn't scare the uh, wild game away. No. Nope. Yeah, we'll get a still here in a second. I'll show you this. There's a little still of him. Beautiful. Yeah. He's got beautiful, me. beautiful buck. You can see he's got that sp split brow time there. On, uh, and His other side's broken over. off, too. Yeah, the other side's, the other broken, side's broken, broken off. off. Yeah. I think I have to shed to this guy. Yeah. yeah. So that's, uh, that's the thrill and that's the pleasure of, uh, of wild to table. Um, some of the frustrations, the high times, and some of the low times um, for all of us, for Bailey and for Dakota, for my entire family who I'm looking forward to introducing uh, you to. Uh, thank you for watching uh, Surefire Saturdays. Thanks for watching everybody. It's a, it's a new day. We're going to try and take Saturdays back like we said. And yeah. uh, don't forget... Get, the, get those loins out, get everything, and try this recipe. This We won't regret it. And yeah. don't forget, guys, next Wednesday they're going to be doing, Bowtech is doing their flagship bow line. Yes. But don't so, forget to RSVP on bowtecharchery.com slash backslash flagship because yeah. you're only going to see it there. You're going to have to wait to see it anywhere else, but if you go RSVP to that, you'll get a notification when they're going to go live to reveal it. It's a chance to win. Yeah, largest...
bow launch of the year. Don't miss it. Um, just like a professional chef would recommend the right knives, the right cookware, the right tools uh, in the hunting and outdoors world, if you are an archer or you want to be an archer, uh, Bowtech Archery is the only choice for you. Yep. Hopefully, and stay tuned to our social media because hopefully we're going to get a bug down out here either yeah. tonight or tomorrow. Yeah, hopefully. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, come and follow us and uh, enjoy the uh, trip. Until next uh, Saturday, uh, keep hunting, keep cooking, and uh, let's take Saturdays back. Oh. <laughs>